So yeah, without further ado, let's just get into module six. Now, just as one last overview, I haven't like I haven't just winged these sections. Um, module six is separated into four different subsections. Our first thing is electric and magnetic fields. Our second topic is the motor effect. The third topic is uh, induction and its applications. And the th uh, last topic is motors and generators. Um, so I've split split it into five sections, like I've kind of kept the electric and magnetic fields, I've kept the motor effect, I've kept the induction, and I've kept the motors and generators. I've just sort of separated out that application section because the induction is a pretty beefy topic. So I sort of, in terms of my topics, and also to have that like two topic split, I've sort of separated it out into induction and then the actual applications of induction, which should be a lot of fun. But yeah, so electric charge is a property of our subatomic particles, right? So when we, we talk about that, right, um, in our last module, module eight, we'll, we'll take a really in detailed look at uh, what the atom is. Um, but subatomic particles, uh, sorry, the atom is made up of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Um, and all of those properties, all of those particles have electric charges, right? So positive protons are positively charged, electrons are negatively charged. This is all probably stuff that you've learned before in year 11, if you remember it. And if you don't, well, hey, it's a good refresher. Now, a couple of quick things to note, because this is what we're going to be focusing on in this topic, is looking at the actual ele uh, electric and magnetic fields and the forces associated with them, which is that all things that have a charge are surrounded by an electric field. This is very similar to how all things that have mass have an associated gravitational field. So it's sort of like, you know how, you may remember if you've done the gravity topic, um, that like, Anything that has mass attracts any other thing that has mass through like the gravitational force, right? Which is why if I drop something, it falls to the ground because the mass of the thing I drop is like getting attracted to the mass of the Earth, and that's how they attract each other. Um, but the way that they do that is every single thing that has gravity has a gravitational field that is coming towards it, right? Um, it's pointing towards itself in nice, neat, straight lines so that it pulls everything in the surrounding universe towards it. In a similar way, anything that has electric charge has an electric field surrounding it. Um, and once again, it's nice, neat, straight lines pointing in towards itself. The only difference is, unlike in a gravitational field where no matter what the object was, it always had the gravitational field lines pointing in towards it, with an electric field, it depends what polarity your charge is, right? So if you've got a positive charge, the field lines point outwards, whereas if you've got a negative charge, the field lines point inwards. Um, so it's important to keep note of that little subtle difference between electric and gravitational fields. But aside from that, like they're basically the same. Um, now, only other things that have a charge will experience electric forces, right? So when you have two things, going back to my lovely analogy of gravity, right? I love the gravity analogy because they're basically like, look, they're, they're very similar things, right? Um, if you have two things that have mass, when their gravitational fields intermingle with each other, um, you get a gravitational force as a result. And so those two objects will start being attracted towards each other. Um, and so as a result, they'll either, yeah, they'll they'll start being attracted towards each other. And in a similar ma manner, um, when the electric fields of two particles start to interact with each other, you get a force as well. The key difference is, of course, once again, whereas uh, with our gravitational fields, they were always attracted towards each other, with our electric fields, it sort of depends on our polarity. So if we have a positive charge and a negative charge, and those uh, two electric fields interact with each other, if they're opposites, because they're opposite charges, um, you can sort of imagine the uh, electric, the positive charge, which is having a force going outwards, meets the negative, uh, the electric field of the negative charge, which has a a uh, field going inwards, and that creates an attractive force, right? Because the, the positive charge gets attracted to the negative charge and so on and so forth. Whereas with our positive charges, because they're both going in the same direction, they kind of start fighting with each other, right? So here's our positive charge. It's uh, trying to be attracted in that direction. Here's our positive charge. It's also trying to be attracted in that direction. And so as a result, um, they sort of don't like each other and you end up with something like that where it's just gross and they don't like each other anymore. Um, However, it's only experienced by other things that have a net charge, which is why, um, you know, there's tons and tons of electric fields around me uh, at all times, because, but because, like, the net charge of me is not particularly great, I don't experience those forces. But that's why sometimes, you know, you might rub your, like, hair with a balloon, and it will experience some sort of electric attraction towards the balloon, because you, like, 
given it a net charge or whatever. Um, and that's how that works. Now, as a quick bit of revision from year 11, we actually know what the formula for uh, the electric field force is. It's F equals EQ. Now, um, your formula sheet, just quick side note as well, if you haven't looked at your formula sheet yet, or if you're not quite familiar with your formula sheet, just chuck into Google uh, year 11 HSC physics formula sheet. It's like it's kind of weird. It's like the second result that comes up now. Um, don't click on the first result because sometimes it can be a little bit dodgy, but just go to the one that looks like it's by Nessa. Um, look it up. It should look like this. It's got all of your formulas. Um, actually, this one's looking slightly dodgy, uh, but basically it's got all your formulas on it um, and it has the periodic table and all of your data on it as well. Um, now you can see over here, our electric field force is given down there by that E. Uh, actually, that's one of them. Our other one is down here, E equals F on Q, um, which can get be, be rearranged to the, the form that I kind of prefer it in, which is F equals E times Q, which is uh, gives us the electric field force. Um, you may or may not remember it from year 11, you touched on it from year in year 11, but like, this is now when it's when it's actually going to be important. Now, uh, the force acts in the direction of the opposite charge. So, for example, if you've got the force acting on a positive charge, it will direct it towards the negative charge. If you've got the force acting on a negative charge, it will direct it towards the positive charge. It's just sort of like that's how these things get attracted towards each other. Now, there's two different di uh, ways that you can express the uh, the sorry. Um, so the, the force is expressed in newtons, our charge is expressed in uh, coulombs, and our electric field force is a bit of a funky one. It can actually be expressed in either newtons per coulomb, which comes from uh, the fact that the force is in newtons and the charge is in coulombs. But there's actually another uh, equation for our electric field, which is our electric field is equal to the voltage divided by the distance between. Um, now this is occurs for a very specific scenario, which is when you have two parallel plates. I say specific, it comes up a lot, but it's like you couldn't use this formula, for example, a charged particle. Like if you just had a single charged particle chilling by itself, like you wouldn't be allowed to use it there. Um, but if you have these two parallel plates that are next to each other um, and you've got like a uh, electric field going from one plate to the other, um, in this specific circumstance here, you can calculate the strength of the electric field by the voltage uh, on either of these plates and the distance between the two plates. Um, and in this case, because these two formulas both calculate our electric field, you can also express not just uh, our electric field in terms of newtons per coulomb, but you can also express it in volts per meter because our voltage is measured in volts and our distance is measured in meters. Um, so that's our formula, that's how we calculate it, and it's our first formula for today. It's on our formula sheet. Um, yeah, if you don't remember it from year 11, chuck it in your brain now. It's a good refresh. I mean, that's why we're doing these lectures, right? Because uh, you get to sort of refresh yourself before the term has even begun um, on what we are doing there. Um, so let's do a quick practice. Don't forget, um, down below in the uh, little slider poll, you should be able to give it an answer. So if you want to go through this question by yourself, feel free to pause. Um, if you want to go through it with me because your brain is currently dead, don't worry, I feel you. Um, and we can go through it together. So in this one, we're going to calculate the magnitude of an electric field force on an electron positioned halfway between two parallel plates with a voltage of 10 volts between them, positioned five millimeters apart. Um, so as with any calculation question, usually the first thing we want to do is just write down like what is all of the information that we're dealing with here, right? Um, so the first thing is we have uh, a voltage of 10 volts um, and we're also told that our two parallel plates are positioned 10 millimeters apart. Another quick side note, another good thing to do at the start of a question is always to draw out a diagram. Sometimes it depends which order you want to do things in, but just for the sake of like, because this is a fairly simple situation. I'll just quickly draw a diagram. Um, now this is the specific scenario I was talking about beforehand where we have these nice two parallel plates um, that are producing 
some kind of electric field. Sorry, that's what I'm like drawing here. I'm drawing the electric field lines because they go from positive to negative, right? Um, and if you're curious, sorry, I've been saying that this is like a niche situation. The reason that this niche situation comes up so much is because this is the way that we generate a nice, neat, uniform electric field. So if we want an electric field that isn't changing over a particular like situation, because one of the annoying things with having like a charge that's producing an electric field is that it changes really, really quickly. Not to get like too far sidetracked, but if you remember back to module three in year 11, um, you would have looked at the inverse square law where the intensity decreases essentially by the same, the same kind of idea, whereas over here it stays exactly the same, which is why we like it. Um, but yeah, so, so even though it is like the formula only works for this one specific situation, but this one specific situation comes up so much that it's like worth actually knowing what the formula is. It's basically what I'm trying to say there. That all aside, let's actually jump into the question. I'm sorry. This is one of the things, if you've never been to a lecture with me before, sometimes you'll find, I just, I make my own way, all right? <laughs> sometimes we get on a little bit of a sidetrack and hey, it is what it is. We have a little bit of fun. Um, that's what physics is, all right? At the end of the day, it's a little bit of fun. Now, our distance is five millimeters. Remember, we want our distance to be in meters. So we're going to chuck on times 10 to the negative three um, or 0 0.05, whichever one you prefer. I like to use multipliers just because I'm quirky like that, I guess. Um, the other thing we know is our voltage, which is 10 volts, easy peasy. Um, and then the last thing is what we're actually looking for, right? We're trying to find the magnitude of the electric field. We are trying to find E, that is. Um, now, remember, we've got our two formulas for E. One of them is our electric field is equal to our force divided by our charge, or in other words, force equals charge times electric field. And our other uh, formula is our electric field is equal to voltage divided by our distance between them. And so just as a general calculation tip as well, it's usually a good idea to write out all of the formulas that use the thing you're looking for, because maybe then you'll be able to figure out, ah, oh, okay, like I know how to, to, to find out all of these different things. Um, I know how to calculate these things because in this question, we've been given our voltage, we've been given our distance, so we can use this second formula. We can chuck all of our numbers and we can do 10 divided by 5 times 10 to the negative 3, which is a lot of fun. Chuck it into your calculator and you should end up with uh, 2,000. Uh, and because we just used this formula, I'm going to say 2 times 10 to the power of 3. We can do volts per meter. However, it is all also perfectly correct if you decide to do newtons per coulomb because they mean exactly the same thing they are exactly the same units which is a lot of fun and hey if you wanted to do a cheeky maths problem you could probably play around with why those two units are the same um 